out. I am one of the chairs, uh, co-chairs for the professional EOA Professional uh, Development Committee. And we've been charged with hosting a series of uh, workshops and programs um, for the EOA membership. And so this is our second one for the month of June. Um, and this is uh, working slash managing uh, in a virtual environment. And so we got the idea, of course, from uh, MyCap hosted some similar about leading in a remote envi environment. And um, it was a great workshop and we thought it would be good to uh, share with the region. And we have our uh, uh, host that will be hosting it, Miss Cindy Cowell. She's uh, from MyCap. Um, mm -hmm. She's gonna basically share a great deal of information with you all. We definitely want you to ask the questions that you have. I'll be kind of jumping in and out, but we also welcome you uh, to jump in and out as needed with recommendations and also suggestions and also questions um, that we can all collectively answer and share amongst our membership. Um, this call will be recorded for you to kind of go back to it, but also just for your heads up. Um, and then we will, of course, be following up. So thank you all for joining. And Miss Cindy, uh, I'll let you go ahead. Thank you very much, DeAndre. So what we did, um, DeAndre and I were on a panel in Michigan is we presented some of the information that we had, and then we really opened it up to like a round table and asked everyone to share some of the successes that they found or maybe throw a challenge that you're facing out to the group. Um, and that really wrapped it up nicely. We had a, we had a really fruitful conversation. So thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm laughing because, so my team is not here, so I'm still leading a team remotely. But in doing a presentation like this, and when we did it with Michigan, I find myself, I came to the security blanket of my office to talk to you all, because that's where I feel like I'm most focused and of the good mindset. Um, I am going to share screen. I put some PowerPoint slides together. Let's see, I think they're right here. Yep, let's go with slideshow from beginning. All right, oops. Okay, so um, as Jandre said, we're gonna talk about leading a team remotely. I noticed that the um, title in the EOA announcement was working slashing leading a team remotely. Um, a lot of the information that I'm sharing can be used if you're not leading a team um, remotely, you are a member of a team who's working remotely. A lot of the tips that I'm gonna to discuss today, you can use as a member of a team to help communicate in the most effective and positive manner possible with the team that you're um, part of. So a little bit about me, because I'm just this person that also showed up in your Zoom meeting. Um, as DeAndre said, my name is Cindy Cowell, and I'm the director of TRIO SSS at Finlandia University in Hancock, Michigan, which is a very small town in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, because we're so, we're rural, what I was gonna say is a rural, but we have a really unique environment up here as Finlandia University is here in Hancock like a mile away in Houghton, Michigan, where Twin Cities um, is Michigan Tech University, which is a public four-year. And then also there's a satellite campus of a community college, go be the community college in Houghton. So we have a really unique um, culture up here, being small, being very Northern, um, but we have three higher ed institutions in our community. Um, I've been a TRIO director for 23 years. Um, we have Talent Search, Upward Bound, and Student Support Services here at Finlandia. And I have directed all of those programs at some point in time. Um, I was the president in Michigan in the 1996-97 board year. I was a member of the EOA Eli class of 1993-94, and that really truly is what kicked me off into leadership in TRIO was being a part of that Eli class. So if you haven't done that, I highly encourage you to look into that. I have a bachelor's in communication, which is a lot of um, the information that I am going to present today is kind of coached in that background. Um, and then I have a master's in education or both from Northern Michigan University in Marquette, Michigan. So when I talk about um, working with a virtual team, I thought it would be helpful to kind of share with you who my team is. So in our um, program, our TRIO SSS program, we have five full-time professional staff, which includes myself. Um, I am the only 12-month person. All of the rest of my staff are on academic year contracts. Um, although the academic specialist is on an 11-month 11 11 month contract. So she's kind of with me over the summer. She takes her one month off um, in sporadic days here and there. Um, but when we talk about the team that we've been leading remotely, we also collaborate really closely, our program and the tutoring and learning center. So the, and just because I'm, I'm the old person in the group, I kind of have taken the, the main leadership role with that group. So we have our, our five, which includes me, 
Um, there's a coordinator that Finlandia pays for the TLC, so she's been in part of our group. We have um, NCAA D3 Athletics here, and the um, academic coordinator for our athletic teams is um, housed in our teaching and learning center partially. So she's been part of the virtual team that we've been leading. And then we have about six full-time professional tutors that come in and out at any given time. So that's kind of me in a nutshell and where I'm coming from um, with some of the comments that I'm going to share with you today. All right, so what we did, you know, we, we literally had, I, I'm not kidding you, on March 24th, that's when Michigan's um, stay at home order went into effect. On March 23rd, we literally had 30 minutes to figure out what we were gonna do because we were told at four o'clock, our campus closed at 4.30, you're not coming back. You take whatever you need with you, um, you now are gonna be a virtual team. And we were like, we had that 30 minutes to be like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna hit the ground running? You know, of course our students, um, our students had been sent home about 10 days earlier. So we already were kind of used to um, working with them in a virtual environment, but now we were also going home. So we opened what we call, we coined immediately Zoom Fest. Um, we have a professional Zoom license here at Finlandia. So we asked for an account that was named Zoom Fest. It wasn't one of um, our, you know, Cindy.co or Finlandia accounts. So we asked for Zoom Fest. We have Zoom Fest um, at Finlandia.edu. And we envisioned that in that 30 minutes of planning that we had, we envisioned it, envisioned it as like a virtual office. Like how are, how are we gonna keep our structure and keep our framework of our home-based work and we said we're gonna we're just gonna open up a virtual office starting right away in the morning um and it it, it worked out there was just so many more benefits than we envisioned in that planning that we did it really gave us some structure um we know we all kind of hear the stories of um somebody laying in bed and answering the occasional email and that's the work from home people have come up to us and they're like oh you're so lucky you work at home you must like have all your spare bedrooms cleaned out and we're like no we're like we're working um, and as we reflect now, it, we're 11 weeks. I cannot believe we're 11 weeks into working virtually. As we reflect, we realize that the Zoom Fest really was a framework that kept us on task, um, gave us the, the um, predictability that we needed, um, and then just opened up the communication. So what Zoom Fest is, is we, like we are all here um, in this Zoom meeting right now. We, so now it's just Terry and I, we're down to two because of summer contracts. But at first, you know, you saw the big team we had in the beginning. We said that we were going to do a check-in at 8.30 every morning. It was okay. You could come to check-in, you know, with your baby on your shoulder or your rollers in your hair or whatever you needed to do. There was some flexibility there. But we said we were going to open up Zoom Fest um, every morning at 8.30 and just do a check-in with each other. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that check-in as we get into some other screens. And then what we did um, is we would just minimize it. You know, we didn't, we didn't stay engaged as we're engaging right now all day long. We would check in, we would talk about things we needed to talk about, and then we would just minimize the Zoom test on our screen um, and keep the volume up on our laptop. And if we got a, it was then we were able to like yell back and forth to each other. A, a student email would come in, um, you would maybe Know, know that a colleague had some interaction with that student. So you would just unmute yourself on Zoom Fest and be like, hey, has anyone talked to John Brown? I just got an email and John's asking about his math class. Does anybody have any feedback on John for me? And then boom, 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 we were able to just pop back in um, and, and have that little discussion, take care of it, and then minimize Zoom Fest again. One of the things that our program does, and I'm so sad because we're not going to be able to continue this in our current COVID environment we're on, is in our hallway where we are, we're kind of the hub of academic support on Finlandia's campus by design. That's where our office is. We would do what we call popcorn Wednesdays. And we have a big pop movie theater popcorn machine. We would put it out in the hallway and we would just pop, pop popcorn all day long. And it would, you know, the smell would be really great and it would attract people in. So when we were sent home on March 24th, right away, the next day was Wednesday, we had Popcorn Wednesday, and we put it out on the university message boards and said, hey, come and join us, we're gonna be here for Popcorn Wednesday at noon. We all actually made popcorn in our homes and we're sitting eating our popcorn on Zoom Fest. And we did, the president of the college came in, some of the faculty came in, some of our students came in, and especially when we were just kind of rattled at the beginning. You know, I know that we have all kind of normalized this environment and normalized the new world that we're in at the moment as far as COVID goes. At that time, it was really reassuring to have some of those traditions continuing campus-wide, um, like Popcorn Wednesday. So I asked my team um, for some feedback on what their, their experience with Zoom Fest was, and these are just two quotes from my team. Um, and I like the second one. So the first one says, it's been a great way to stay connected. And some of the things that I just said to you, this one I like, it says, I like Zoom Fest. It allowed me to connect with my coworkers, students, and express concerns and questions. It was sometimes annoying, which cracked me up. It was sometimes annoying, 
but the positives far outweighed the negatives for me. So that was really the structure of, of what we did um, in our office. And then I sampled people across campus. Um, I have a former colleague who moved um, to a new position that's 100% online. She works, she, she never um, has to travel to an office for work. So I, really, I sent out a, a survey as we were preparing for the Michigan event and asked people to share their feedback as um, being an online staffer. And my, uh, forgive me, my Zoom screen is hiding some of these words here and I'm moving around. Um, so what I got out is as a leader of an online staffer, especially at the time, think back to March and how, how we just didn't know what the world was gonna be with COVID. Number one, be person-centered. Before you dive in and be like, I said I needed that report by three o'clock and it's 3.10, are you gonna get that report for me? Or dive in at that 8.30 check-in and just start doing boom, 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 boom. Here's our um, to-do list for the day. Stop, just stop and ask your folks, how are they doing? How is your family doing? And, you know, what's your stress level like? Are you getting enough sleep? Um, and then just sit back and listen to what they have to say to you. Because that's really going to inform the work that you are or are not going to get done on that day. Um, that said, in that whole idea of framework, clear goals, expectations, and timelines are huge. Everybody has to know, um, you know, how much, you know, time and effort. Like, what's your expected expectation as a team for your time and effort? What are some of the major projects that are going to take precedence over other projects? How are you going to check in? How are you going to report? Like really super clearly, what are those expectations? And then in addition to um, this group setting that I'm talking about, as the leader of a group, weekly intentional one-on-one -on -one check ins with your staff um, just to see how they're doing. Because they may not, you know, we're all human beings. They may not um, share things with the whole group on that Zoom fest that they will share with you one-on-one. -on -one. And we might do that by a phone call. We might do that by text. We might do it by email. Um, there's breakout rooms in Zoom that, you know, they may say, I have something I want to talk to you about. We can go to a, a private breakout room. But really, as a leader, intentionally checking in one-on-one -on -one with each of your staff on a weekly basis to be sure that, you know, they have everything they need to survive in the virtual environment. I like this. Um, and this came from my colleague. Um, she said that in their company, they require there are certain meetings during the week that you have to turn on your video. Because if you're working, you know, like in my case, I have a little, when I'm in my house working, I have a little cute, I really like it. I have a little area in the corner of my bedroom, and that's what I've set up as my office. Um, I'm there by myself. You know, I'm, I have a 17 year old son that's at that time, the less he saw of his mother, the more happy he was. Um, so I was really by myself. So if you were just on Zoom, trying to connect with your colleagues and you had those black squares on Zoom with someone's name on there and that's all you saw, that would be difficult. Um, you know, and, and just even as far as communication signs um, and effective communication, you really need to see somebody's face. So I like that, that this company says that there are required video um, Zoom meeting days. So, you know, we would make a joke that that was the days that, of course, we had to get out of our sweatpants and pajamas, at least from the shoulder area. And then at the beginning, because we're, we're learning this and there's so many updates and we, we made the intention to not overwhelm people's email boxes. If something would come up and somebody would be like, oh, I'm gonna send out an email, we would really step back and, and decide what need, you know, did that email need to go out? And if we thought it was an email that needed to go out, what was the most clear and concise way that we could convey that information? You know, just think about the fact, you know, we were getting, you know, we're on committees and we have colleagues and, you know, we have other departments and we have the tutors and we have all these people asking us questions. And, you know, and then think about our students. You know, every single instructor is emailing them information. The dean of students office is asking what they need. Their trio office is asking what they need. Their coach is asking what they need. So we decided to make our emails only when absolutely necessary. Um, we went with bullet points. Like, I need to talk to you in this email about these three, these three bullet points and just try to really not suck up a lot of people's time. Um, by overwhelming them with communication and information. And then also just offering people grace. Um, you know, different people have different concerns. You know, you don't know, um, you know, do, does somebody have a family member who's ill somewhere or a family member that they can't go and check in on them and that's weighing hard on them? You know, do you have kids who are trying to go to school? Are you competing for Wi-Fi? Just assume that all the time everybody is doing the best job that they can. Um, you know, there was, there was just varying energy levels. Um, you know, there was a day in Michigan when the governor did a new, her first executive order after the stay at home and that big emergency thing came in on the phone and it just rattled me. It upset, it, I was taken aback with how badly that upset me when my emergency thing came off on the phone. So on that day, if someone had been really peppering me for deadlines and what are you doing, that would have, that would have been really difficult for me. So just know that everyone is, you know, going through some different continuums of 
energy levels and um, issues that they're dealing with and assume that they're doing the best job that they can. And then don't micromanage. Um, I, you know, I really questioned my team as we kept that Zoom open, like, is this what you want? You know, do you feel like Big Brother is watching? And, and as far as communication goes, they thought that yes, that was what they wanted, but be really careful with whoever your circle of influence is that you're not, not micromanaging, you know, especially a, a students aside, but as professionals, we are professionals and we know how and where and when to get our jobs done and we know where our goals are and just trust us to get that done when we can get that done. Um, so I told you that I have a degree in communications. Oh, my husband goes crazy because I remind him of this all the time when there's those husband wife um, discrepancies. But the definition of communication is that your message, oh, there's a typo there, that your message is both given and received. We're really good at giving messages. And someone will be like, hmm, I don't, I don't think I quite understand you. So we take that exact same message and we give it again. Well, if they don't understand it the first time, if you give the exact same message in the exact same words in the exact same tone the second time, they're not going to understand it the second time. So just making sure that you are communicating in a way that those people that need to understand you are able to understand you. And if, if, if there's some, um, uh, dip, well, can't think of the word, if they're, if they're having a hard time understanding you, you own, you own it. Like, what am I doing? How do I need to communicate it at a more effective level so that my team can understand um, what it is that I'm saying? So if you're in the virtual world, um, now more than ever, your communication skills are key. So I, I, I told you I sent out this Google Doc and surveyed a, just a wide variety of people um, in my network in asking what their virtual environments were like. And one university staffer, um, not in my department here at my college, said some communication would be so appreciated right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I, 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 I'm so grateful for the communication I have when I'm sheltered here in the corner of my bedroom that that would be really difficult if you were a professional who was sent home and then you just felt like you were an island on yourself floating out there. Um, but, and, it, and again, it says this has been covered already, but it's just so important to set clear expectations, especially if you are the manager of people in a virtual environment, you know, you have in your head what that work is going to look like. If you don't clearly um, express to your staff what those expectations are, there's going to be some, some um, fall out there. Uh, keep personal responsibility in mind. Uh, you know, I may think that I gave you the information that I needed. Um, I may think that your tone, you know, you, you don't have a whole lot of, of um, information here in the virtual communication environment. I may think your tone was off a little bit. Um, keep personal responsibility in mind and use I statements. Own your stuff. You know, if you're having a really low energy day and someone asks you something and you don't respond in the best way, you know, apologize. Own, own the way that you um, responded to that person. If you are like, hmm, there's, this communication here is a little faulty. I don't know what's going on. Use I statements. You know, not, well, when you come on, you always, you know, you use I statements. Like, I want to know what I can do better. I, this is what I hear. Um, you know, tell me if I'm correct or not. i got to move my Zoom box again. Um, and then give positive feedback as often as possible. Think about, so I, <laughs> oh my goodness, I was working at Finland University when email came into being. And if anybody else was a professional, when email came into being, that was a really hard learning curve. I remember on, I think I was president-elect of the Michigan board at the time, and two board members were having a communication via email, which was new. It was new that they decided not to pick up the phone, and they were doing an email, and they ended up in a disagreement. And I, as you know, president-elect, I had seen some of the communication, and I knew it was because you can't get intent and inflection and tone and body language in an email that you can get in person. And I knew this wouldn't have happened if they even had heard each other's voice. Well, think about that online. Um, we need to be intentional in our communication and give people positive feedback as often as possible because just those little nuances with your face, you may not be getting it when you're communicating in an online environment. Um, and I, I just added this in there today because this has happened, oh, I never typed, oh, sorry, I typed this in today. This has happened just, I would say, in these last two weeks. And having um, this presentation in mind, I was like, huh, this is, you know, we're, this is a brand new territory that we're in here. This is very interesting. So like I said, we're in week 11 um, since being moved to a virtual workplace, and I'm seeing a new season. It was like we had, when we first went into the COVID and we were all pushed home, there was really, an, in, you know, worldwide, there was an intention of we're all in this together. Let's build people up as much as we can. You know, let's make the best of this. Let's find the silver lining. It, we're getting tired, you know, it's been 11 weeks, um, you know, and some of that 
that immediate um, fear is over with. So maybe we're letting our guards down a little bit. But I had some situations, three specifically, that have come up in the last two weeks um, where people are, they're a little salty. You know, they're not on their best behavior the way they used to be. And that's just something I thought I would share with you. Like, oh, interesting. So, we, you know, we're going to be probably, I mean, at least, in the, at least another month or six weeks here at Finlandia, we're going to be in the online environment. And I'm like, okay, so here's a new set of skills that I'm going to have to pull out and find out and figure out and think about because people are just getting a little tired and crabby. Um, and we just need to try to, you know, be, be the positive person in that communication and, you know, and try to use the I statements like, oh, it sounds like, you know, you're really overwhelmed with, you know, like our, our poor mailroom person is down there by herself, literally sequestered in the mailroom trying to do mail without seeing anybody trying to do mail for the whole campus. Like that must be really hard for you. Um, you know, thank you for coming to campus every day when we all got to stay home and taking care of that for us. So one of the, this is one of my last screens. Um, there is a true, there's science out there already um, on Zoom fatigue. And after 11 weeks here in Michigan, we certainly are experiencing some Zoom uh, fatigue. So out of INSET and Clemson University, um, they were researching why, and I don't know if I'm saying for all of you, but sometimes at the end of a virtual day on Zoom, where you would think like, oh, I'm in my favorite leggings all day long. This is great. How can, you know, how can I be more fatigued because I'm sitting here comfy with all my favorite snacks right next to me um, in my leggings, but we feel more fatigued after a day of virtual communication versus um, personal communication. And some of the reasons, the findings that they came on, out with in their study was, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, is you have to concentrate really intently to pick up the nonverbal cues of a person. You can't, you know, you're just not taking that. Your brain isn't processing those nonverbal cues naturally. So you have to be, like I said earlier, intentionally positive because my brain isn't going to pick up just nuances in your face or the way your, you know, eyebrows are positioned um, that you're giving me some positive cues. Or for example, right now I can see as I talk to you four of the um, Zoom screens and all of the rest of you are hidden because I'm sharing the screen. So I'm getting zero positive feedback from you. I'm talking into my computer laptop. Um, so if you imagine if you were doing that all day long, kind of having that running dialogue in the back of your head um, that things are positive and things are going well. I mean, that's very fatiguing. It makes you tired by the end of the day. You know, the barriers, um, you can't relax into natural conversation. You, we all have seen those yellow boxes on Zoom light up when someone starts to talk and three people start to talk at the same time and then everybody stops talking and then two people talk at the same time and then you're like, oh no, that's okay, you go. So it's just not a, flowing, comfortable, relaxing, natural way to communicate, um, which is also tiring. And then there's a delay, it's not natural. Um, you know, I talk and then your box will light up. I can see Sarah, Sarah's box will light up, um, but then it'll be like a second later before we can hear her voice. Um, and then watching yourself all day long, you don't do that. I think, I mean, all of the years and years and years of talking to people that you've done, you don't see yourself from the front of your face um, when you're doing that. So that's just lighting up a whole another part of your brain that we've never used before in our communication um, in natural, commu natural communication. So that is fatiguing. Um, and then add on top of all of this, the stress of you know, worrying about our health, worrying about our family and friends' health, worrying about our students' health, you know, the economic stress that is on our country right now. Um, and, you know, and I put this paragraph together before we had the the murder of George Ferguson or uh, George Floyd. So we are under a, an incredible amount of stress and we're trying to serve our students, move forward, um, continue to grow as professionals. I mean, that is a lot. That's a lot that we're carrying around with ourselves. So there is um, Zoom fatigue, which is more than maybe come into the office every day and just be aware of that and give yourself some grace um, and you know, take the time that you need to tend to your own self um, and be sure that you are as healthy as po as possible. And then kind of a nuts and bolts part of this did, um, I attend, was it yesterday that COE did the um, webinar on the FAQs that finally came out from the Department of Ed, but I pulled this one out um, because this was one of the areas that we had no guidance, like how are we gonna document that we are really using our TRIO funds in the way that our grant is written and says that we will use our TRIO funds. So this is from the FAQs that the Department of Ed um, put out regarding accounting for time and attendance. Um, and I won't read this to you. If, if no one, if someone hasn't gotten this, um, I'm happy to forward it to you. But we, in the COE webinar yesterday, um, they talked about 
it's it's not that hard. Um, you know, we there's a there's a track of everything that we're doing because we're doing everything electronically. So really, just being intentional of keeping careful notes and documentation of your time and what you're doing. Um, and I just wrote myself some notes of how we what we have done in our program, which I would be really super interested um, here in a minute to hear what other people are doing to document their work um, with their trio funds when they went online. But we so we had a um, desktop based we used student access by hybrid and it was desktop based. It wasn't um, online. So that's one thing that we and hybrid graciously did a fabulous deal on moving online um, with student access. So we did that. So we we purchased the online student access program so that from home we can continue to document the student contacts the way that we have been but of course there was some lag time in purchasing that and getting that set up so we created a google doc um, a google form that kind of mimicked the information that we needed to put into student access and we started doing that immediately because our students were just coming out of what midterms at the time that we were sent home so we were doing lots and lots and lots of student coaching um, so we used that google form to um, key in all of the student contacts. Our tutors just kept, of course, you know, they we moved all the tutoring online with Chromebooks and cameras and everything that they needed. So they just continued to keep all of the tutoring logs that they normally took. Um, and then what I asked my staff to do was to make a, it use Google Gmail um, here at Finlandia to make a folder, name it what they want, but that folder is going to be um, virtual office student contacts. And anytime they're working with a student via email, I want them to label that email um, that it's from the virtual office time and put that email in that folder and then every single staff member has a running record of all of the contacts that they've done with students um, while they've been working online in one place where it's really easy to get to. And of course our time and effort reports, we continued to fill those out. Um, we keep our staff meeting notes to show that we were meeting as a staff regularly during this time um, and then we all belong to campus committees. So I asked everybody to please keep um, the meeting notes from any campus committee meetings that they attended during this virtual time so that we have access to those to also document how we were spending our time um, in our virtual offices okay last screen so some of the comments um you know be transparent with each other um you know have some communication your every staff is going to have a different style you know some of my colleagues in michigan said they're just meeting every thursday as a staff um, some directors said that they just touch in one-on-one -on -one every day with staff you know whatever it is whatever the personality of your staff is um, but be transparent with each other as to um, you know, what the expectation is and what work you're doing and in what way that you're doing it. And then really work to maintain the team mentality. Um, especially at first, I did feel really isolated sitting in the corner of my bedroom. So what can you do to keep that team mentality going um, and kind of bounce off each other and feed off each other and keep each other um, built up? And then I personally um, have been taking advantage. There's so many free professional development opportunities out there right now um, that has been huge for me to stay connected with the, the greater higher ed community and TRIO community. Um, and then I have been very intentional in showing appreciation to our team um, as a group. In fact, I, I out of my own funds, I just, I, they, they, they had 30 minutes to get ready to go home and they knocked it out of the park. I mean, I'm just blown away with what a great job they did. So there's a website called Zox, Z-O-X, I just found some really inexpensive bracelets, bracelets that said um, uh, it's the, pro it, it, it was a, I can't think of something about process, but it was, a, it was a great saying. So I just, I only had to purchase like about seven of those. It wasn't a big deal at all. So I purchased seven of those bracelets and I put them in a little thank you card and I mailed them out to my team after the academic year had concluded and just thanked them for how they, they just rose to the occasion and, and knocked it out of the park even further than any of my expectations were, you know, building some fun. Of course, we had some three o'clock on Friday afternoon happy hours um, or snack times where we just didn't talk about work and, you know, saw each other's kids and animals and stuff. And that's the other thing with flexibility and not micromanaging. Our office was always a kid friendly, animal friendly, partner friendly environment. Um, you know, nobody was ever shamed because we were having a conversation and a kid popped in and asked, you know, mom to please open the, the little fruit snacks or whatever it might be. Um, and then we did, we assessed our, we assessed our staff. Did you, you know, we did with our students over and over again, but we did, we assessed with our staff and we did provide particularly the tutors some hardware that they needed, but you know, do you have what you need to be connected at the level you need to be connected at? And if you don't, what is that? And let's problem solve and figure out where we have the resources to get you um, what you need to perform at a high level in a virtual um, environment. And then, um, 
this is kind of a dumb one to be at the end, but we really, we, we got feedback from the staff. What do you want that virtual environment to look like? We, we comprised it together. It wasn't a top-down thing by, um, by any means. I think, yep, that is my last slide. Okay, let me stop sharing so I can see everybody. So I would be um, really interested in hearing from folks as to like what your greatest um, like unexpected, like, oh my gosh, this really worked well for our team. Um, and I, I didn't expect that um, to happen. And then what was one of the greatest struggles that you faced and what were some ideas that you came up with to overcome that struggle? You can kick us off, DeAndre, and you'll, you'll prime the pump. Okay. Um, so, yeah, for me, um, we, we had a little bit more time than you. I think we closed down on uh, March 16th. Um, and so, you know, one of the things, it was just, you know, a lot of questioning going on about how, what departments were considered essential and who would be able to do what. And uh, college telling us who should and shouldn't be doing anything. So one thing that um, I had to do for my team was definitely create a contingency plan um, just moving ourselves 100% remotely, but also sharing that with the institution, letting them know how we are beneficial, how we do, um, how we serve our students for one, and all the essential services that we provide that they needed. Um, and just making sure that we had the team on board in that contingency plan and that communication plan um, to our institution. Um, and so, you know, we've tweaked a number of things that, that worked for us to be able to see a consistent template on this remote learning environment. But, you know, throughout time, we've, we, of course, tweaked it. And, I, you know, I just feel like, again, having them involved in the voice, in the process of letting them know what it is that we have to do is very important. So, you know, that's one thing initially that worked with us. Um, but then just continuing um, those weekly meetings. And, I, you know, like you said a lot of things that just kind of touch faces. This is very, it can get very overwhelming when you're thinking about all the pieces of communication that we do have across the board from committees that we're on, from our president on updates, from of course, uh, you know, regional chapters, uh, state chapters, We've, we're getting a lot of emails and just not trying to overwhelm our staff. So really just giving them that, you know, space of, you know, that we are trusting that you are doing the work that you're supposed to do, but, you know, communicate with me. I have an open door policy. And so leaving that space out there for my students and just scheduling one-on-one -on -one meetings every little blue moon for them to be able to touch bases with me. Mm -hmm. One thing that I didn't talk about, um, which I realized I needed, is even though I was literally, I don't even know, 30 inches away from the end of my bed in my office, is I really made that my workspace. And I didn't necessarily work anywhere else in my house besides that workspace. So there was just that act of when I would get up at, you know, 4.35 o'clock every afternoon and turn off that lamp that sat on the desk in my bedroom office, it helped my brain disconnect. And I was able to be like, okay, work is there in the corner. I'm now in my home um, with my family and my private life. And that was really helpful for me mentally to be able to disconnect from. We, we do, we're all trio because we're passionate about what we do. And we think about it all day long. So that was really healthy for me was to have that, that just that space, turn off the lamp, and now I'm on to family time. Um, so I'm gonna oh, Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Claudia Mosley. I'm with the uh, Center for Education Opportunity at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And we, we too had a sudden notification. We, we, we saw things were happening at other institutions, so we kept thinking, oh, we, it might happen here, but we weren't really prepared. Um, so uh, one thing that was kind of funny, we were uh, just beginning to learn Teams and use Microsoft Teams. And so it was uh, toward the end of the day before students were going to leave for spring break. So we, uh, or it might've been the Thursday before. So we kind of knew tomorrow might be our last day. So I, I couldn't be at our staff meeting. So I said, hey, let's practice. I have to go prep for another meeting, but while you're all in there, call me on teams. Let's try to do this <laughs> practice a meeting because that was our only way to really set up. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that Friday they did not want us to come in. So we were trying to do something really quick as a practice run. But to share some of the, the things that we're uh, trying to do, um, Teams has worked really well for us. We, we, we use that as part of our continuity plan, our continuity of operations plan for working with students 
um, and engaging them so that we can both see them or do an audio call uh, along with our um, uh, appointment making system. We use Starfish at our institution and an advisor note system uh, as well. Um, to maintain uh, contact, we do, we maintained our weekly meetings. Uh, I have leadership team meetings with my assistant directors over SSS and SSS STEM, um, and they are checking in with their teams as well. Um, I haven't been meeting with them every week, but try to do touch bit points with everyone at least every couple of weeks. Um, sometimes I'm more successful at that than others, so that is an area I'm sure that I will continue to work on. But one thing that we did institute, I didn't want to require a lot of mandatory times because um, I, I'm sure you've talked about at your institutions trying to stay away from synchronous um, activities if you can avoid it or, or with students trying to have some flexibility because you know I have uh, team members with toddlers and small children who are napping and they're trying to work around that or they're two mm -hmm. partners in one dwelling trying to met you know or in an apartment trying to manage meetings and those kinds of things i called myself the principal of uh of my household i, I a, a, a pintail place because i had two children that were at home in school also that had questions about their online learning um but we also had what we call team time so it was 30 minutes every week uh we took turns hosting uh and it was just a time for us to have fun together so I, for instance, did a Jeopardy game using an online Jeopardy game that I found. Another person said, we're gonna do MTV Cribs, find the place in your house you wanna share with us. And we literally went around with our phones and said, well, this is my, my special place in my house. And it was kind of fun. Uh, and uh, we haven't quite done the happy hours yet, but I, I don't know that I would make that mandatory, but we definitely make uh, this. So those are just a couple of things that uh, we've done to one, maintain community. We've had a town hall to try to maintain community with our students and give them opportunities to all come together while also working with them individually. Um, we had to submit continuity operation plans to our institution. So that helped to kind of pull some of that information together as well. Thank you. Um, we, um, the one thing I picked up on is the, the flexibility, you know, the asynchronous. So yeah, so we tried to, as an institution, truly push asynchronous learning for our students. Um, the tutors, part of how they knocked it out of the park is they were willing to meet with students at, at any time. You know, I, there was tutors who were having appointments at 10 o'clock at night because a student might live in Alaska or Hawaii or somewhere. And then with the Zoom Fest, um, we, like I said, we would minimize it. Um, but it was just like it was we really did wrap our brains around it like a virtual office so people would like just unmute and be like hey I got to run to town um, blah 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 blah. I'll be back in a couple hours and then they would leave the Zoom fest so it really was like you would do in the office like hey, I have a dentist appointment I got to go I'll be back in a couple of hours um, it, it did work out well for us but yes you you do have to I think have a higher level of flexibility during this time that we're working than you would maybe in an office where you punch in and punch out per se if I could just share really quickly, because we are an office uh, that has an example of a number of things that were unanticipated that happened. So I had two retirements happen. So they just left us last weekend. So now I, you know, I have two. <laughs> um, and that was hard too, because yeah. you want to, these are people right. who were with us 24 and 26 years. So I was determined that it would not be, um, you know, the, they needed some kind of pizzazz because we wanted to have them go out with a bang um, and so we did uh, we organized kind of a curbside it wasn't quite a parade but a curbside uh, uh, celebration for them unfortunately we did have someone get sick we you know they thought they had COVID and unfortunately they were not diagnosed with COVID but with um, but with cancer and so we had to come together too because that was very hard information and I had to be really strategic about sharing that information. So I just want to share what I did just in case anyone else, this happens to anyone else, where you have to share some devastating information. Um, um, our team member gave me permission to share with the team and had, had, had actually written something to share. So I scheduled an update meeting and when we and, and uh, started the meeting and just said that our coworker had an update he wanted to share with us and I, I wanted to uh, send it to them while we were all together. So I sent it then, I didn't send it before. 
And I said, I'll give everyone a moment to read it. And so, of course, I can hear the, oh, no, you know, everybody's responding. But I wanted us to be in community together because in isolation, I just didn't know what the response would be and what people would need. So we made ourselves, I made myself available if people wanted to stay and kind of process. And then folks, because I had some newer team members who really didn't know this team member very well, but obviously felt something, you know, they had some response to it. So just all kinds of unexpected things are happening, both, you know, as a team, but in our families and our homes. And so, um, like you're saying, patience and kindness and empathy and uh, just flexibility is, has really been important. Mm -hmm. We had a, um, a day and I don't even, it was a simple topic, like maybe somebody had entered some data in student access that messed up the reports, it wouldn't print the right way. And one of our team members, it was a day where she was low energy, but you don't really realize it until that moment comes and her reaction to the, the what had happened with the reports. It was literally with reports. Her reaction was so over the top that, um, and we you know, and we have the group together, right? So you want to you want to protect her dignity. So I, what I just said in the in you know, because she she asked all of us to come in because these reports weren't running right and contacts were all off and everything. And then she started to really kind of come unglued. And I just said, it sounds like you are really in a time of high stress, um, and you just need a few minutes. So why don't you right now log out of ZoomFest? We'll work on figuring out what happened while you're gone um, and just have something to eat, have something to drink, go for a ride, go for a walk around the block. Just, just tend to yourself for a while because I, you know, I, it sounds like you really, you need it and let us know what you need. And, I, and I, it, it worked out. I, I, hope, I think I did it in a manner of care as opposed to you know, shaming her um, because she came back on probably, I'd say two or three hours later and she was like, wow, you know what, I did take her to walk around the block the way you said, and I cannot even believe what a difference that made. I feel so much better. Um, and it was done, it was a non-issue, it, it went away. Um, I, I, do, I do have one story, um, the two of you were talking that I forgot about when, so our students went home about 10 days before we went home. Um, so we were trying to figure out how to communicate with them. So we set up our initial, I don't think we had Zoom Fest, um, our private address yet, but we set up a Zoom meeting um, and let our students know that we would have a Zoom meeting open, you know, every single day of the week for whatever, three hours or something. And we just put the laptop um, out in our common area on top of the filing cabinet. And we, we made the, we, we kept our Zoom on and we made the students be able to see our office. So maybe it would help ground them a little bit because all of a sudden their world was ripped out from underneath them. So they could come on to Zoom and see something that they know and see something that they love. Um, oh my gosh, we scared the death out of the first student who logged into Zoom fast because you hear, you know their voice, right? You know that it's Ian. So you hear like, hello, is anybody there? We all were like, oh, it's Ian! And we all went running to that one laptop, and our faces are all right. <laughs> like we scared the death out of that poor student. He was like, I, "This I way more than I expected." Um, so that was that was part of a learning curve. Like, don't just scream and dive on the students when they come in. Be calm. Greet them the way you would greet them when they walk into your office. But that's funny as I think now about the growth that we've had with the virtual. So I would be curious to hear. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, successes and struggles from anybody else and any tips that you have. We do have one question in the chat box, somebody who um, would like to remain at home for two more weeks after their campus reopens. Um, and what would be some effective arguments that this person could use with the management team at their university to extend uh, their virtual office for a couple more weeks? Anybody who's been in that position or has any feedback on that? I can say here at Finlandia, our institution has been pretty gracious at um, at this point anyways, because you know the students are coming in for what eight to ten weeks yet. But at this point, um, as we work through our safe open plan and our state starts to open up, they have been fairly gracious in telling us to go with our comfort level. Um, if we're concerned or if we have someone who's compromised in our home, to please um, continue to work at home if that's what we feel is best for us. So we are lucky on that front. Um, but does anybody have any feedback for somebody who's struggling? to be able to remain at home for a little bit longer um, and do their work from there when the campus is opening back up. Hey, Tina. Hi, Cindy. So we actually just talked about that because I'm actually staying at home while the rest of my um, coworkers are coming onto campus at, here at Bay College. Um, what we're doing is we're opening up a Zoom and I'm gonna leave it run most of the day, but we've worked into it the waiting room. So I greet the students and as they come in, I find out what their needs are, and then I send them off to the waiting room, which is assigned to each one of the 
people, but it allows our students to feel like they can come, because our students can't come onto campus either. So they can come in, they can chat, and we get to greet them, and it's, um, you know, just comfort for them to be able to see one person and not be overwhelmed coming into a Zoom session with, you know, six screens staring at them, waiting for them to say what they want. Mm -hmm. So um, that really works. Unlike what we did. <laughs> I know, but it's so exciting to see them. I get it is. some of our students FaceTime me and I'm just like, ah, how are you? Right. You, know, it just, you do miss their little faces. Um, but I think the other part of that too is it also allows them, you know, you that personal moment to kind of chat with them about something that just puts them in, in a comfortable space so that they're ready to talk about whatever it is they need to talk about. But we have a lot of, um, we have a couple of new faces. Our director, our OOA director is brand new. Um, so she's gonna participate with us as well and stuff. So we've actually even had a few other departments that are gonna participate in this with us. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing here at the college anyway. Thank you. And your college is, is your college flexible with who comes back onto campus and who state remains virtual? Yep. Um, so there's a, a go date for our student services department. The end of this month, I think another two weeks, they are required short of um, any, you know, talking to HR and their managers kind of thing about um, who shouldn't be. But right now their go date is the 23rd. Um, and then hopefully a little bit after that, they're hoping to um, implement something for our students to take. We're developing a Blackboard course so that they have to go through like a safety course in order to be able to come back onto campus, they have to take it. And then um, the other departments, I think they're giving them until the end of July. And then after that, even if there are people who have concerns, I know for me, I, I take care of my parents and my parents are ill. So for me, I'm higher risk for exposure and stuff. So with that, I'm able to work with my supervisor and be able to potentially work from home a little bit longer. So it just, you know, yeah, they're very flexible. They're very easy going with us, so. Yeah, my, um, and, and, ask, and somebody asking, you know, what they can put in an argument to management at their institution to stay home. You know, I know that we've all been very well documenting the work that we've done in our time and effort. So I personally would kind of pull some reports together and show like it's, there's hardly any hiccups in the services that we're providing virtually, um, you know, and whatever the reason is that that a team or a person would need to remain home for two more weeks. Um, I, I, the con continuity of operations plan um, that Claudia talked about, you know, you show your plan and you show your outcomes that you've developed so far. And it's, you know, pretty much data right there in front of you to say that that work is getting done and, and it will continue to get done if you remain home. Does anybody else have any feedback on that? Y'all are a quiet group, must be late in the week. Must have Zoom fatigue. All right, let's see. Um, DeAndre, somebody had asked about the PowerPoint. Do you have a file like on the professional development page of the EOA website that we could put that PowerPoint there if anybody wanted to refer to it? Um, I'll check into that. Kenny, Kenny probably can assist me with that. Okay. Uh, generally, I've been working with um, Practices and we have uh, been sending them out to the membership, and he puts them out on it uh, on the best practice website. So okay, okay. So like the EOA newsletter would have information as to where people can find yeah, the so resources. Okay, okay. Thank you. No Cindy, okay. I have a question. If um. Could you share a little bit more about your um, strategies? I, um, now that you're talking about documentation mm -hmm. of uh, time, I, I would be interested to hear more about how, how you've put that together because I'm thinking about all the different places that we are, that that right. is housed in our unit and I'm not sure that I'm prepared to like pull it all together if someone were to request it so that you've got me thinking about how to consolidate that information and pull it together so I'm really interested in hearing about how you're doing that. Um, so for me personally, I, I was blown away with how fa fast the folder in my email grew with direct student service um, or academic coaching appointments via email. So that would be one spot where I could mm -hmm. give you student names okay. and dates and topics um, that we covered. 
and it, it worked. It was another one of those things that worked way better than I expected it to. And then we, you know, we all have our monthly time and effort reports. Um, so, you know, going there to say we're still participating in our university committees. Um, you know, we were, we were, we all participated in the MyCap virtual conference. You know, so we would have those sorts of professional develop or not pro just things that professionals do, activities that professionals mm -hmm. do um, aside from serving students. So we would be able to pull um, that from our time and effort reports, and then. Um, staff meeting notes, you know, to show that we're continuing to work as a staff and set goals and achieve goals as a staff is another um, document that I was thinking that kind of showed some continuity once we went to the virtual world. And then here at Finlandia, we are, the university is designed on a committee structure. So you as a employee at Finlandia are assigned to a committee and it's an expectation that you work in the area that that committee is um, works in. So we all are continuing to attend our university committee meetings. So I ask that everybody please, um, so our, our university is supposed to house all these on the website and you know how this things go, sometimes things get there and sometimes they don't. So I asked everybody, particularly during this virtual time, would they please uh, make a folder and know where all of their committee um, meeting minutes are um, from the time that we went home to current. So, so in my mind, I was just thinking that I would, I, you know, I'm just, you know, you always think like if the federal auditor walks through your office door, what do you have to document what you're doing? And in my mind, this seemed like a really good paper trail of showing that our, that our work continued at the level pretty much that it was at um, before we left campus. And now we have Heiberg online. So now we're doing all of our student contacts and, you know, the different, if it's career counseling or personal counseling or academic coaching or course advising or tutoring or whatever it might be is now going into um, student access the way that it did when we were on campus. We, um, I wanted to make a suggestion too for something we've done is put it on just like our Outlook calendar, like our personal like daily schedule. So it was really nice, especially when remote working to be able to look at any team members calendar and know exactly what they were doing or working on. And that also built some trust. I know, especially with administration who, you know, wants to be sure people are working. And um, so it was really easy because I had to supply reports as a director to my supervisor and the vice chancellor. And uh, it was just easy to look at people's calendars, know what they were doing. And then again, there was other documentation such as emails staff notes, there was things in, you know, the canvas shell. And um, so, yeah, but that Outlook calendar was truly like a guiding, the guiding uh, force for a lot of our documentation. So can you talk a little bit more about that? I'm trying to visualize it. So like on your calendar on May 13th, like mm -hmm. what would, what type of things would you have Document. Yeah, so like a lot of times, you know, people in the first like hour of the day were maybe checking emails and administrative work and they would just like put that in there. And then if like a student called at any point or emailed and that started taking up time or Zoom calling, they would put that in. So um, even though there's by the end of the day, it's like a full day, it's a full eight mm -hmm. hours, but you can right. see exactly who they've met with and um, if they had community meetings over Zoom and um, a lot of it was just mostly documenting the phone calls you you were making. I love the personnel. So I I I don't see my team <laughs> keeping up that pace. Um, but obviously it worked really well for your team, and I love that idea. So one of the things in some of the conversations that we've had is I just love the different personalities of um, different people's teams and what works for one team may not work for another. Um, I, I love that idea. I could do that personally. I'm thinking of some of my team members that would be like, forget that, not doing that. Yeah, it was, it's, it was difficult, but honestly, it was easier than the reports they, you know, at one point it was like, write a daily report every single day to your supervisor. So, which that's like even more, like, I can't, I can't do that. So I was no. like, please just put it in your calendar and I'll collect it and mm -hmm. send it off. So yeah. So that was an institutional expectation in, in the beginning. Yeah, and I to some extent that's still that's still there. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Okay. So I know we're coming up on the time, um, Cindy. Of course, I wanted to thank you, and I give you the uh, platform to continue if you all still are having dialogue. I just have another meeting at three o'clock, but we do appreciate your presentation. I think it was timely, as uh, Madam President um, Stewart said as well. 
Um, and just for the membership, thank you all for attending um, as well. And I hope everyone is doing well. It's definitely been stressful times for all of us, um, but also we're getting through this together. Um, the other thing I want to just kind of share some other things that we're possibly, um, that we're having in works um, and we're looking for assistance with. So if you have any recommendations for us in regards to some programs and uh, workshops that you want to see put on by the membership, please email us and let us know. Um, some ones that we're thinking about with closing up June, we're thinking about doing um, technology hacks, uh, working from home. And so if you know somebody that's good with technology, good with digital platforms, good with documents, and you want to refer them to us, that would be very helpful. That's one of the ones we're trying to do within the next couple of weeks. And also we're thinking about, um, which we're all dealing with, especially with the time